Today on PTL, we're going to break down the semifinal matchups, take a look back at the quarterfinal studs and duds, and listen to the pros in Mic Check. Welcome to Brussels. Primetime League starts right now. He gets some damage on his stake. He gets a quadra kill, and it's going to be all fine. So has gets a pentakill after Baron. There it is. Koo Tigers go to the semifinals. Fnatic will advance to the semifinals. The only team to do that three times. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Brussels. I'm Trevor Quickshot Henry, joined here by North America's David Freak Turley and LPL caster Julian Pastry Time Car. Oh, dude, it's not quite Southern Hemisphere temperatures up here for the World Championship. No, very chilly here in Brussels, but certainly a lot of good games to look forward to. Oh, I cannot wait. Now, before we get ahead to the semi finals, let's take a quick look back at the bracket and how we've ended up here with only four teams remaining. Origin, SKT, Fnatic, and the Koo Tigers. They will be doing battle this weekend and we will be breaking down the semi-finals a little later. But Freak, we've seen 72 champions yeah. this World Championship already. Uh, quick update, Gragas, Lux, and Ziggs have been disabled ahead of the semi-finals and for the remainder of the World Championships due to the bug found by Gragas. How do you think this is going to impact the teams knowing that Gragas is quite a contested pick? And what else are we going to see? Um, it will make a bit of a change. Um, honestly, I think we'll end up seeing that sort of next tier of champions. Like, really, the jungle pool was always Elise, and then you'd see Rek'Sai and or Gragas, and then there was like a big pool underneath that. So you've got things like the Lee Sin that we're seeing actually less of than we expected, uh, things like Olaf that you might see Rain ever pull out, things like this. So uh, we'll see teams dip down a little bit farther, and it does change pick and ban dynamics a little bit here, because now you've actually got a reason to pinch junglers. There's only two sort of S-tier junglers now. Uh, so, you know, you have like the Mordekaiser and GP bans that some teams would trade, some teams would ban exclusively on red side. Uh, now you've got another sort of pinch with Elise versus um, Rek'Sai, and then, you know, there was a discovered one with like Tom Kench being a big one as well. So there's this, you know, sort of cascading tier list that, that kind of keeps changing throughout the tournament. Tom Kench, jungle, are you a believer, oh, pastry? I mean, no. Tom Kench has been very popular. <laughs> Tom Kench is probably going to be banned most of the time, so I don't really expect it to get through. But, I mean, they could play it as a flex. I think if a team can do it, why wouldn't you do it? Because you have another option now on your roster when it comes to picks and bans. So put you on the spot just a little bit. What champion would you predict to see if you were going to predict one? Oh, Lord and Master Freak. Oh, new new champion played. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to my gun and say Corky again. At some point, it'll be true. Probably not. Uh, actually, I should say Singe because also like you know it's there hasn't there hasn't yet been a well we say that that Corky still showed up right so yeah. uh, or Jack. So I feel like this is the worlds that that breaks all worlds and all the all the you know trends go away. So I don't know. Uh, how about Galio? YOLO. Okay. We'll YOLO see. Galio. <laughs> Alright, Pacer, you got to give me a prediction before we head on and start talking about uh, some of our studs. Have we seen Ezreal being played yet? I actually expected no. quite a lot of Ezreal from some of the Chinese AD players. We haven't seen any of it yet. And well, also yeah, because they all lost. Unfortunately, <laughs> we didn't see a whole lot from the LPL. Chinese teams, I'm afraid. It's not a lot of losses. A lot of deaths. <laughs> that, that's true. Passes so, deaths. let's get ourselves set up and start talking about some of the studs and duds from the quarterfinals. And as we said, before semi-finals, let's talk about the studs and duds from the quarterfinals. Simple rule, who stepped up in your mind and who didn't. I'm gonna kick things off because I'm in the host's chair and I'm allowed to. Um, stud, looking back at the quarterfinals, has to be Smeb from the Koo Tigers. He really showed us how dominant somebody can be in lane, despite being behind in kills multiple times with Fiora, still managed to out-trade and out-duel and prove that on any given someday, he will lose, unfortunately. Um, looking at the dad's side, I was so bummed by Deft. There was so much hype coming in. We had that fantastic feature of Deft versus Reckless, one of the world's best team fighting AD carries in a meta where extended team fights is a thing. And then he played Jace, and that did nothing. And then he just <laughs> teleports, didn't do anything, and I was just really disappointed. So for me, Major, major dud was deft. Uh, freak, stud and dud looking yeah. back at quarterfinals. I'm going to go with a pair of top laners here. Uh, top laner stud, Huni. I think Huni super stepped up. Uh, I tweeted it last week, but like the freak who watches competitive loves seeing Riven come out because he's so exciting. The solo queue freak really doesn't want to see any more Riven, so I'm a bit torn here. But the fact <laughs> that Huni's bringing out some counter picks, he's one of the very few Riven players actually playing Riven at this tournament here. And and I'm glad these branching in the champion pool bring things out, AP Echo, things like this. Uh, he actually upped his damage per minute from 40 to 460 in the quarterfinals. <laughs> Is that up? Uh, I mean, it's still pretty high. Uh, he's the only person in the quarterfinals to keep his opponent below one damage per gold, which is like 
pretty hard to do, but but he kind of wrecked Cora there in that one. You could say Cora didn't do very well, but either way. Uh, honestly, just Hootie had a really st uh, stand-up performance, great top lane play. Uh, blind picked Riven, won that game so as well. So you've really hammed on your studs. <laughs> yeah. You're done. So, so someday, kind of the opposite here. You mentioned the fact that uh, Smeb did so well, Sub did basically nothing. Um, he got counterpicked three out of the four games. The only game he didn't get counterpicked, he first picked Darius. So he's like, he's been given the chance to succeed. He's given the chance. And he went negative in CSD. He gave Smeb 580 damage per minute. Like, hey, he didn't give. He, he didn't give. Smeb, I mean, Smeb he gave Smeb it. some solo Freak. kills when Riven had two deaths. <laughs> well, like the guy, or uh, when Fiora had two deaths. Like, well, I agree like something got walked over. A dud of note. Now, pastry time. Studs and duds from quarterfinal. Uh, my studs actually Gorilla from Ku Tigers. Not only did he bring Tom Kent into the world's meta and create chaos now in the picks and ban phase, he's just been super solid. He's pretty much took it to Pikachu their entire quarterfinal. Support chain was going off. Gorilla's always been a great player. He did it with Jana in 2014. He's done it again with Tom Kench in 2015. I'm so impressed by the player. Gorilla is one of the best support players in the world. Super keen for that Soraka that he loves so much. But we'll have to see. <laughs> as far as Doug goes, I'm going to have to unfortunately keep putting more Chinese players uh, under the bus. <laughs> Koro did not play to the expectation that I, I had for him. He's a semi-carry player. He can play carry. He's a very good low econ top laner as well. I expected a NAR player this good to really be able to beat up on a lot of Darius players. His Fiora looked okay, but his TPs did not. He never got a counter pick. He didn't play carry or low econ. Both styles he can do, and just didn't do either of them. Like, EDG in general obviously let me down, but Koro especially. I expected the knight in shining armor, and he's kind of tripped over on his face and fell straight into Huni's <laughs> ribbon. Well, there we go. Tripped over on his face, <laughs> according to pastry time. So that's us, dads and dads from the quarterfinals. You guys at home, let us know on Twitter. Now we're going to take a look forward to our semifinals. And it's time to break down our first semi-final matchup between Origin and SK Telecom. We're going to start this off by looking at five key topics that I want you guys to chime in on. First of all, player talent, then picks and bans, then I want to look at the laning phase and early game, their vision control, and finally, their team decision making, which can include team fighting and strategies and rotations. Don't worry, I know it's tough pastry time, I'll guide you through it. <laughs> Let's start with team talent. And which team do you think has got the deeper roster, Freak? I, I think this was pretty obvious. Uh, it's sort of two mid laners that are both among the five best in the world. SK Telecom T1 are obviously incredible. Uh, Izehun's starting, I think that's fine. He's a great player in his own right. Marin is probably the best top laner in the world when you roll in his entire package. The fact that he's a great shot caller as well, plays so many different styles, he, he's actually been great. Um, especially when you compare him to Soaz, he's actually been underperforming. I had like, you know, like a wishy-washy idea of him, and then like the first week was pretty good from Soaz, and it's been all kind of downhill from there. He's been kind of bottom of the barrel stats-wise for most top laners, for like most of this tournament, especially for someone in top four, so that's really big mismatch. I mean, just down the line, you've got like such amazing so, players. So, Pastry, a bit yeah. of a monologue here from Freak. Is there anything that Origin can do to balance this uh, talent? Maybe Niels in the AD carry Yeah, role? absolutely. Bottom lane for Origin is actually very impressive to me. Niels has been a standout player all tournament long, and obviously a very strong showing from the rookie this year. In general, people have picked on the SK Telecom bottom lane. That's how EDG managed to actually knock them over for the most part at MSI. So I think there is options. Soas and Peke are good players, don't get me wrong, but they're just inconsistent. Peke has been quite consistent, surprisingly, this world, and so has this been very inconsistent, so. Well, let's talk picks and bans then. Inconsistency, yeah. I think Peke, his champion pool is one of the so more small. difficult things, pastry time. It's just so small, like, picks and bans, you would hope and think Origin have amazing options because they've got so many flexible players, and then Peke only plays like two champions. <laughs> it's like Orianna and Nivea, and it's like, well, I guess I know what they're doing now because I can no longer use these flex picks with their strong players like Soas and even Niels and Mithy with a bit of flexibility in the bottom lane because it's just like Peke's always doing the same thing. And we know Izihun's starting for SKT on Saturday. He's played two games in the group stage already. How does this affect their picks and bans and then maybe transition into the early laning phase, Freak? I think it's pretty hard for the picks and bans to be easy for these guys because we haven't really seen Izuhun play a whole lot of games. He got like what two group stage games and that was it and otherwise he's kind of a mystery. Uh, mid league pools have changed that much in the last couple of months so like you can still look at his old LCK games and get a decent idea of it. Uh, but in general actually there is one thing I do like though for Origin's pick and ban. Obviously SKT are very consistent but Origin will pull out random stuff. The top lane of Vladimir against KT is what I'm going to point out where uh, out of nowhere Malphite top comes up from Sunday and he's like you know what? Top Vladimir, what it do? Here's a hardcore powder pick. And that was actually a very good game from Soas. So these like really out of the ordinary, haven't seen it in six months champions, will be there occasionally, and maybe Orja gets a game or two off that. 
Well, we'll have to see. Something else that can play into their favor, the Western lane swap has sort of become somewhat of the de facto. Do you think that's a fair statement to make? Considering Origin comes from a region where lane swapping against Fnatic and the likes of H2K yeah. has been so much the norm. If this was day one of the tournament, I'd say sure, it's an advantage for Origin. But at this point of the game, uh, we've seen all the teams adapt very well. We've actually seen a couple of new uh, tweaks of it come out as well. We've seen people come into the dual lane really, really early on and actually balance all the waves. So uh, I think SKT, I'd be very surprised to see them get behind in the first five minutes in a lane swap game. Pastry time, what's your opinion on these two teams' vision control across vision control. the map? Uh, Origin's vision control has been interesting <laughs> throughout the <laughs> well, that's tournament. That's a word. That's a word. Uh, they like to get very aggressive with their movement. They set up for things well. They play around their teleports very well as well. But like most supports, Mithy does like to face check brushes every now and then and get himself killed. So does Wolf, to be fair, but he's done a little less this tournament than maybe the middle of this year. In general, though, they set up so well for objectives, SKT especially. And it does make Callista then a little bit more important with the tendencies he supports, the fact that so many of them are so good at denying vision and whatnot. Being able to yank your support back out and getting Callista, I think, is a big deal. It really is, and it's something that Niels has fallen back into yep. time and time again. And I'm really interested to see how. Uh, much of a threat SKT place on Niels's Callista. Now the last topic that I do want to talk about before I make you guys predict is these teams decision making. Now this can yeah. come from the rotations, Pacer you've talked about setting up for objectives, but what about contrasting mid to late game, strategy, map play, team fighting? Do you see any chances here in terms of origin maybe towards SKT? I actually think this is where the teams get very different. They're both strong team fighters. SKT are probably quite a bit better. But SK Telecom has sort of made their way this tournament by punishing people so hard in the early to mid game. Because as soon as you make a mistake, they know exactly what to do to punish it. Conversely, Origin have won games by doing random stuff in the late <laughs> game with their double teleports. And that's actually a decent way to beat SK Telecom. It's probably not going to work three out of five games, but it might work one or two. So if they can get a solid game plan for maybe the other game, they might stretch it all the way over because they yeah. do weird stuff with double TP. Yeah. SKT might not be prepared for that. Absolutely agree. I think SKT, like when they're behind or equal, they play very slow, very risk averse, very much around their wards. They'll burn flashes if there's a chance someone gets caught out. Like they're very, very safe. Once they're ahead, it's ridiculous. They are so, like they smell blood in the water and it's a school of piranhas there from SKT. <laughs> and Origin loves to overextend for farm. The number of times are going to see Soaz or Peke or someone push too far up, get killed, and then the map gets broken open. Probably two of the you know, three wins come from that. But as, as Pastry said, there's some really good clutch shot calling from Origin. Random scenarios can play to their favor, so if the map does get broken up without them getting punished, Origin have a lot of familiarity in this case. So let's find out whether or not Origin can actually take a game off of SKT. I want to put you guys on the spot and put your predictions down. Origin or SK Telecom, which team will advance to the finals and which player will have a shot at the second World Championship title? Faken, Bengi or Peke? One way or the other, one of these guys has a chance. Freak, you're first. SKT, uh, probably a 3-0 as well. I'd say in any given game, there's like a 10 to 12% chance that Origin wins off of Chaos. But if you do the math there, you know, an 88% chance three times is still more than half. Like, it's still actually <laughs> more likely than not they go 3-0 I'm, anyway, I'm not planning so. to do the math. Uh, <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Pastry. Um, I think Origin might actually take a game, but I think SKT. 3-1, if not 3-0, I think Fake is going to have a very good shot with Bengit at, at another World Championship title. Well, there you have it. SKT from PTL. You've heard what we've had to say about the semifinals. It's about time we listen in to what the pros had to say last week from the quarterfinals in this week's edition of Mic Check. Why don't, just why don't sit, we sit here and chill, dude? Why don't we just sit here and chill? Yeah. The season five World Championship of League of Legends and chill. Victor no flash. Victor no flash. Victor no flash. No cage. No cage. No cage. Kasha. 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 Hey, battle. 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 He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Okay. Good job. Good job. Good job. No. 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 I hit, I have, I have, have black shield, I have black shield. Yeah, fighting, 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 fighting bottom, fighting bottom, fighting bottom. Tipping, 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 I'm around. 
나이스. 덤큐, 덤큐. 아이고, 나 실수했다. 나안 죽을게. 노플, 노플. 나이스. 나이스. 오케이. 오케이, 마리. 우리 할수 있다. 우리 할수 있다. <웃음> 레인오버가 우리를 부른다. 아, 어, 오케이. 만나야 오케이. 돼, 만나야 돼. 가자, 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 가자. 잘 봐봐. 나좀 멀다, 나좀 멀다. 빅토르, 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 딜하고 죽어 딜하고 죽어 죽어 딜 당하고 죽어 딜 당하고 죽어 천천히 봐 천천히 봐 룰루 잡아 룰루 잡아 말파 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 보고 있다 우리 천천히 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 네, 잡았어 잡았어 말파 봐 말파 말파 잡았어 말파 잡았어 이쪽 이쪽 봐줘 이쪽 봐줘 고치 맞춰놨다 고치 맞춰놨다 이게 내 최선이야 나이스 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 Don't talk with enemies We are not here to be friends You know we are here to smash them Finish him He's my friend I don't care Don't die back Okay I can go, I can go. You want me to go? Look at my TP. Have a see, 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 see. Okay. Give me, give me, give me. Now we. Six now. Go across, no flash, no flash. Go across, no flash, no flash. Go across, no flash. Nice. Can, can, can. Kill, kill, kill. Kill, 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 ベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベベ
Who do you think has got the deeper roster when it comes to player skill? Uh, individually, I actually think Fnatic probably has like standout individual players. Huni's been great. Alternate Forbidden's been amazing, almost as a sleeper player from the mid lane. And they've got a super solid bottom lane and great jungler as well. Like, Kyu are a good team. They have good players. Gorilla especially stands out for me on their team. But as far as individual talent goes, Ku definitely played more as a team, but Fnatic just have superstars. Yeah, I think there's two spots where Ku can edge. Smeb can play better than Huni. I think Gorilla as an individual player is probably a bit better than Yellow Star, but uh, I still think Yellow Star is a complete package, much like Marin. Uh, just he does so much for the team, good shot calling, everything else. So yeah, talent wise, in terms of individual champion movements, I think it's almost 50 50. Well, Smeb was my stud, and I'm a little nervous for Huni because. Hey, who Smib, knew my stud? Hey, so, Smib showed which one up. Which smarter? We're going to find out, <laughs> won't we? <laughs> Hashtag quick shot win. Um, let's look uh -uh. at picks and bands and talk about some of the champions then that these players are going to pull out. Tom Kench is something that we've seen Gorilla and Yellowstar play. We saw Yellowstar doing some interesting yeah. sort of lane ganks with it when he played it. Actually played in LCS as well. Failed miserably then. Um, and Febovin is showing he can play anything and everything. So picks and bands, who's got the edge? I actually think there's a big edge for Fnatic here. Two main reasons. Uh, so number one, they have a counterpick for, actually th multiple main reasons. Number one, they have a counterpick for Fiora ready. So if the Fiora comes out, the Ribbon comes out, which means you have that little pick and band dance up there. Number two, Fnatic are willing to play with Mordekaiser and Gangplank in the game. In every single one of their quarterfinal matchups, um, they were willing to let it all the way go down to the last ban. Then we saw EDG ban like the Mord, so then the GP ban came out. But Fnatic are willing to play with both. So their red side bans are unlocked. That's a big deal. Um, Meanwhile, Q Tigers are not willing. When they played against KT, they banned both on their red side game, so already uh, bans freed up because Fnatic are willing to play with them. The other big one is the champion pool for Rainover is quite deep in the jungle. I think he's happy and willing to play much more than just the Elise and the Rek'Sai, so the Gragas disable helps him as well. Pastry, has Freak missed anything here, or do you well, share the sentiment? fairly comprehensive. I think so as well. It's just the way Ku play. They play very much as a team. They almost always pick an overarching strategy, especially from somewhere like the bottom lane with uh, Ash for Prey, and I think just in general, Fnatic have shown a lot of flexibility already with their solo laners, and that's going to continue here. Ku, they'll have stuff prepared. Ku always bring out something special. They did it in the quarterfinal, but I think generally right now, from what we've seen already from the teams, Fnatic just seem a little bit more flexible. Now, in terms of flexibility, if some of these uh, curveballs get thrown during picks and bans, who's it going to hurt more during the laning phase? Fnatic have shown they can do, you know, anything really, but Ku were mostly looking for those head-to-head -head lanes during the quarterfinal pastry. What's your take on uh, both of these teams early? I think laning-wise, Fnatic actually also stand up here very well. Again, it goes back to their strong solo laners. Forbiven and Huni have had great tournaments, and I think no matter the matchup, they'll always get themselves into a good spot, and they'll be able to play well, especially in the early landing phase, and navigate a tough matchup. It might be Rainover actually that suffers here for Fnatic, because if the jungle pool is not as much to his liking with Gragas sort of out of the pool now, he might not be able to be as effective because so much of Forbidden and Huni's success has come from Rainover's early pressure. Bottom lane's probably going to be fine. Ku might be able to find an edge there as well, though. Freak, I can see a little bit of yeah. disbelief there. Um, it, I've been thinking about it, right? Like, so mid lane, I think, is totally easy for Fnatic here. Kuro, I don't think, is going to flex on Febivin at all, and Febivin's a big carry. Uh, I think it really, a lot of it comes down to Huni and Smeb here because these are teams that are fairly evenly matched in overall sort of gameplay sense. And, and so when, when teams are kind of at a standstill strategically, the big deal is who can break open the split push. And okay. that just to me is so incredibly important uh, that like it comes down to that individual skill matchup, which is very, very close. And talking about breaking that open vision uh, on those sidelines yeah. to either enable the split push or disable it, which team's going to have the better vision? You've already touched on uh, Praise Ash and Hawkshot is something we're trying to talk a little bit more about on air because it's such a difficult thing to quantify if Prey gets Ash, or if their warning's good, who's going to have the better vision? I mean, Gorilla's already a fantastic support. He was my start already for the quarterfinal. Ku's vision is miles ahead of Fnatic's. Not that Fnatic's is super bad, but again, European teams, they have this uh, <laughs> tendency <laughs> to face check where they shouldn't maybe be yeah. with uh, champions like Tom Kench, like the Braum, and they can get themselves caught in silly positions. So Ku, a very macro, high-level team. They like to move strategically around the map, and it's because they have strong vision and good sense of where the game's going. Yep, absolutely agree. Warning's and very, very good for these guys. Historically, Ku's been a team that's played from behind. It's something yep. that you, you see in the LCK, it happened again in quarterfinals. So with decision-making and strategy, this is something Ku maybe has in their favor a little bit because Fnatic rarely plays from behind. It's not something they have the most experience with. It's funny because it's sort of like the Origin SKT thing where like Fnatic are very good with their crazy shot calls. Like, 
Yellow Star is good at this. Yellow Star is really good at making the, the right choices. There was the like 22 minute ace they had against EDG in game one where they made the right call to go for the 4v2 at Baron and then Yellow Star sacrificed himself to buy enough time for the Baron to go down. Like these really smart calls come out of Fnatic. Uh, but yes, as you mentioned, Q are so good at playing from behind that an early game lead is not enough to secure Fnatic the win and Q are very good shot callers. Will they be able to play from behind when Fnatic gets a 24 minute Baron? I mean, there, there are few teams that take as many early Barons as Fnatic. I mean, honestly, Fnatic are a very aggressive team, and I think that's a big benefit against Ku. Like, late game, they've shown they can make the right decisions. Well, the game out is a big deal. Yes, and they have shown that even when behind, the HQ game certainly comes to mind, they can make the big plays and, and play late game as well. But Ku have shown a lot of resilience in the mid game, so if they don't get hammered by Fnatic, it should look good. But Fnatic can just come out swinging with the LeBlanc, with the Riven, and just go crazy. So, gentlemen, we've had a pretty serious discussion here, which is somewhat unexpected considering the tone of PCL <laughs> today. And I think it's because this is a difficult match to call. Yes. So I'm not going to, and I'm going to make you guys do it. <laughs> Fnatic or Ku Tigers? What a cop out. Hashtag <laughs> Freak Wing. Quick shot doesn't get anything for this. Who is winning your semi final? With what score and why? Well, I thought it was going to be Fnatic beating KT. Now it has to be Fnatic beating Ku Tigers. I'm still hoping for those 10 points <laughs> in Pick'em. Uh, but I still say it's Fnatic. Uh, I, I, I do and don't want to go to five games. Five games are exciting, but at the same time, I just want, like, the fate that Fnatic are really good, so... You and know, it would be a European team in the in, final. In some number of games. Pastry, who's your winner and Well, why? I already ruined my pick -ems. Thanks for reminding me, Freak. Yeah, EDG did not make it through that quarterfinal. <laughs> but I did predict the what, winner... Were winning Worlds for you or something uh, as well? Maybe. <laughs> uh, but I did predict the <laughs> winner of that quarterfinal to go to the final. So oh, okay. I think it is going to be Fnatic as well. And it's just, again, that, that this run is so hard up this side of the bracket to yeah. presumably play SKT. Uh, Fnatic have already shown that they're such a strong, resilient team. I think they can beat Q here and... Have a very good run at the final. Now is the question, like, are you are you like just putting all your EDG faith with Fnatic or are you like angry at them for knocking your team out? I certainly hope not, because okay. every time I've seen an Australian <laughs> LPL cast of faith, it's not ended well. <laughs> There's your predictions for our semi-finals. <laughs>
hashtag free quiz. Well, that's time. That's you can't say hashtag. That's my line. You guys at home decide who. I did who's Twitter like argument, five minutes ago. <laughs> whose argument was better? Hit us up by tweeting hashtag pastrywin if you think his pitiful argument will prove origin can overcome SKT or <laughs> hashtag freakwin if you think freak is predicted correctly and can help the coup beat Fnatic. I guess it'll be a coup. Hey, uh. <laughs>Find out whether or not Pastry Time's interesting Death Timers discussion will come true on Saturday when Origin take on SKT. It's at 4 p.m. local time here in Brussels, 7 a.m. Pacific. Now on Sunday, Fnatic will go up against Koo Tigers at 2 p.m. local time, two hours earlier, but daylight savings will change the clocks here in Europe, so you guys make sure you double check your times wherever you are in the world to tune in for that semi-final. Moving on, we're gonna take a look at the top five plays from last week, or as Soez can call it, Le Penta. At number five, Fnatic's Febvin made all of EDG's life bars disappear as he picked up a triple kill. I think they're going to turn their attention onto Koro. He's going to be in a little bit of trouble. Grand challenge comes down, body slam connects. Koro will get dropped, and it's first blood to Fnatic. But Pawn will teleport in and get himself one back. Hooney's on the way out. We'll have that broken wing slash to get more. Hooney does get dropped by Clear Love. It's a messy fight so far. Two for two, and it's Jungler on mid lane action. Febbervin with double buffs gets a triple kill and gets out. Coming in at number four. Pawn's death was not in the cards as EDG's Maiko helped change his face. Pawn's gonna get dove here. They've got Alistar coming in behind the turret. Oh, Pawn's in so much trouble. Yellowstar needs to hit his combo. Flashes for the knockup hit, but Pawn backwards. But Maiko saves him! Keeps him alive! After making that great escape, Pawn had one more trick up his sleeve in our number three play of the week. Reckless will sidestep the shock blast before Pawn has teleported with 100 hit points. The stage, he flashes it and gets the kill. They just completely outplayed him. Diving into number two, AHQ's Westor takes the bait and the kill in his 1v1 versus SKT's Faker. Faker's gonna get killed, Westor follows the flash, may not survive, one more hit! The melee minions oh. chasing and Westor wins the 1v1. Now has the potion ticking too, but nicely done by Westor. I predict a slow-mo zoom in from our observers. Ignite right there. Wow, really nice. <laughs> and our number one play, Origin Soaz with Darius and the Pentakill. They're trying to collapse. The team is coming. Amazing can jump over the wall. Who's going to win this fight? It goes to the red team. That goes to Origin. Here's the battle. Karsa alone in front, absorbing, gets dunked. Soaz is online. Maple's down. He's still going. He doesn't get the third as Azonius comes across. He gets some damage on his neck. He gets a quadra kill. He's on the NL. And it's going to be all five to save the game. Soaz gets a pentakill after Baron. Absolutely love seeing Penta kills on the Penta. And if you guys at home want to see your favorite place featured on the Penta, hit us up on Twitter at LOL Esports. Use that hashtag, the Penta, and we'll try and get it into that list for next week's episode. That does it for today's issue of PTL. I'd like to say thank you to Freak and to Pastry Time for joining me out here in the cold. And as we go, we have one high flying, stunning moment in our last hit. There's the heal, and Kuro now with a clear line for the damage on the arrow. Can he do a little bit more? And the auto attack gives Kuro the double kill someday, a bit late to the party. And I think time's out for him. He's going to try it all. Oh, oh he no! got stopped by the gravity field. Triple kill for Kuro. I love oh, man. <laughs> I love how Gravity Field yeah. freezes animations. Strike a pose. <laughs> Good night, Darius. Insane.